Hello everyone, uh, today I'm going to be showing you how I put screen check in my games. Um, I'm just going to do some live coding and stuff, but um, I'm just basically going to show you I use the same method for all my games for screen check. And I'll also be showing you how I can call it from any other script. So, um, first things first, we have our camera, directional light, brand new scene. Um, so, what you want is your game manager and making the child, the camera, a child of the game manager means that basically whatever value this gets changed to will change the camera's positions as well. So, I'm just going to leave that at zero for now. So, we're going to be attaching our screen shake to our game manager and not to our camera. Um, our game manager also, I'd normally put in my options and menu scripts and stuff like that there as well. Um, so I'm going to create a screen shake, C sharp scripts. Um, let's open that up. Right, so for this, going to get rid of start. We will be using update. Uh, right, so we need two floats to control our shake. So we want how long it's going to be, so our shake timer, and we want how strong it's going to be, so our shake intensity. Now as long as we can change those, we're going to be getting screen shake, so public float. Now, what happens? Well, if our timer is set to be more than zero, so if our shake timer is greater than zero, we want that to count down. Um, so shake timer minus equals time that delta time. There's lots of ways of doing this in Unity, but this is quick and painless. <laughs> So, um, alright, so that's kind of where we're starting. So what we want is we want this object, which we've attached it to, we want its transform position to be something random um, when our shake timer is more than zero. Um, and it's counting down automatically. So here we want to change our transform that position to be something random inside our unit circle. So that inside unit circle basically gets a random point around it somewhere. <laughs> so you'll get a random amount of shake. Um, and how strong that's going to be is going to be our shake intensity. So we just multiply it there. Now when our shake timer is not greater than zero, we don't want it to shake. So we want to keep our position where it is. Um, so we're just going to make our transform that position equal factor 3.0. And that's the bones of our game, of our screen shake for our game. So if I save that out now, we're going to see our two public variables come up eventually. There they are. And um, let's create some kind of cube or something that we can see actually shaking. Um, so I'm going to say, let's have a two second shake and intensity wise, just one. Um, one is actually very strong. I generally use 0 0.1, um, maybe one in extreme cases, like your game over or something. Um, right, so when I press play, it's just going to shake for two seconds and that's it. So like you can see that the cube never actually moved, but the camera shakes. So that's exactly what we wanted. Um, but this isn't good enough. You're, you're never going to be typing in values. So let's get rid of them. Um, I actually hide them myself. So hide an inspector. And they're gone. <laughs> Go away. Right. So our cube now 
is going to be our player, our enemy, our own collision script, our music is just starting to play, or whatever it is that's going to shake your game. Um, so let's create a script called shake for some reason. Doesn't matter what it is. Um, again, you'll be doing this in in probably in your player code or uh, your enemy code or whatever it is, wherever you decide you want to trigger your screen shake. Um, I'm just going to make it quite simple. Uh, you want a reference to your game manager, um, so I'm just going to do a public game manager. Um, so I can assign it. Find your game manager however you want. Uh, game object I'll find or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Uh, so let's have some way of actually causing a screen shake. Um, input key. Let's say if I hit spacebar, why not? Um, so if I hit spacebar, I want shake to happen. So game manager, get component, get my screen shake, and all right. Well, for this, I could say like shake time equals one and if I copy this uh, let's say our shake intensity equals one as well uh, let's just make sure that we assign our game manager just because I didn't use game object that find. But, uh, right, okay. So by doing this, you're going to get your screen shake. That might be enough for you. Um, what I generally do in my screen shake is that I make my own function for it. So I'll have a public function. Uh, go shake with my timers and my intensity in there. And that's basically just going to set these values. So shake timer is that timer. And shake intensity is intensity. Um, just to save lines if you're going to be using this a lot. Um, so we could get rid of this line and change this to shake. And let's put our 1 1 in there. So this would be basically, I would use this like on collision, game manager gap component shake, and then shake. So if you have a collision and you want a screen shake, you just put this line there, and it's as simple as that. Um, that's <laughs> that's pretty much it, uh, to be honest. Um, the few other things I would do is in my screen shake script, um, I might have some kind of boolean, which you might be getting from your options script or your game manager script or whatever you call it, but. Um, Shake is on, and then you'd basically just say is shake on. But if shake is on, do all this stuff. Uh, just leave it at true. But basically, like this could be from your options or wherever you're saving your your thing so that the, the player in their game can turn on and off the screen shake. Um, you generally want that to be an option because some people get, I don't know, is a travel sickness or something, but uh, screen shake doesn't actually agree with them and they hate it. But uh, 
that's the bones of the game, uh, the screen shake for your game. I uh, hope you can use this or find some use out of this. Uh, thanks for watching, and goodbye.